Fucking Piccadilly Circus, I swear to God. <sighs> My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and a lot of people ask this question. I've done this video before, but no one seems to be able to find it, so... <laughs> Exhaust pressures, back pressures, and what does all this mean? So, first we have to start at the cylinder end. So we have an intake port, an exhaust port, and a cylinder. And we have this wonderful thing called valve overlap. And valve overlap is when the piston's coming towards the top. We're on the exhaust stroke. What happens is, is our intake port is open, fucking kids, and our exhaust port is open. Like so. They are both open at the same time. And what this means is, as the piston gets to the top dead centre, your clearance volume that's in here, and let's just say this is 15cc, it's a typical-ish one depending on the cylinder, um, in there, it's typical for about, I don't know, 500 to 1,000, stuff like that. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's just say it's 15cc in here. And this means that when the piston gets to the top, there is a 15cc space in there. And if it's exhaust gases, that means that there's 15cc of exhaust gases that we can never actually get rid of completely. So what we do is we do this overlap thing where your intake valve opens your fresh fuel and air goes in here and that pushes out the, the, remaining, the remainder of the exhaust gases out of your cylinder. This is a purge, right? We're purging the cylinder. Now, this is all based on quite a few things and the timing of this overlap is based on where your power band is. This is most efficient at your power band because hopefully that's where you're keeping the engine. That's where they expect you to keep it. And this is all to do with volumetric efficiency. So because it's to do with volumetric efficiency, we want our cylinder filling the best, the most efficient filling of our cylinder when we're trying to create the most power, which means you're in your power band, right? Sat nicely in the middle. And we also use the exhaust system. You'll see in like MotoGP, they'll have an exhaust that goes up, turns round on itself and then goes out of the end can. Why do they do that? Why can't they just make a short pipe? Because our exhaust length here, so if we continue this on to the end, to the very end here, this length here is quite important. This is all to do with the temperature of the gas. So the temperature of the gas and the speed of sound. As temperature, as temperature increases, so does the speed of sound through air or exhaust gases. Really, there isn't that much difference between air and exhaust gases. In there, you've got H2O, we have that in there. They're different quantities, but you have H2O, quite a small molecule, the smallest molecule. You have oxygen in there, you have CO2, again, quite a small molecule, and so on. So the difference between exhaust gases and air is minuscule, um, comparing one to the other. So if you increase the temperature, the speed of sound increases, basically because our exhaust gas itself has more energy, it is hotter, which means that it can accelerate quicker, and so on and so on. Same thing with a blowtorch. You turn a gas tap on, it's... You light it and it accelerates. It's... Like that, like a flamethrower. It's... You know what I mean? It accelerates, and accelerates because of that temperature increase. But the, what I'm saying is the speed of sound in which these pressure waves travel up and down this exhaust pipe increase. So when you have a power band and when you have your exhaust valve, uh, your exhaust valve opening times and duration and your overlap and stuff like that, this is heavily affected by your exhaust length. Why is this? If you get in a bathtub and swish to the back like you did when you were a kid, the water goes up with you and it goes down towards the tap end, and then it'll swash, slosh backwards and forwards, which basically means you get a pressure curve like this. Right? This is just when, when there's asymmetry to a system, so in an exhaust pipe, as a pressure wave goes down the exhaust pipe, the, exa the exhaust gases are going this way. This is basically density, that's what you want to think about, it's density, it's not, you know, the pipe doesn't bulge or anything, it's just density. This has to come from somewhere, 
and it comes from here. So basically all these end up here. This is just density. This is what a pressure wave is. It is higher pressure, but it also means that it's denser. There's more molecules moving that way. If you're in a traffic jam, you all sit there. Green light is like you're opening your exhaust valve. Then you set off and you'll notice that all the cars set off and they set off and they set off and they set off and they set off. And the density in there is a lot lower. So you're all still sat here waiting. Density is how close you all are together. Then they all set off. So when you have velocity, your pressure drops. And then basically another red light further down the road that stops you all. And then you all bunch up again. That's more density. So you'll have density, low density and high density again. And this difference is basically just a wave as it moves down. So what they do is you have a finite exhaust length that is basically static, it's constant, it's fixed. Um, unless you have variable, but we won't go into that right now. So when you have an exhaust system that has to have uh, resonators, mufflers, baffles, all this kind of shite, and a catalytic converter and all these things, they basically, that exhaust length with all these restrictions in the way so there's a little restriction there, there's a little restriction there with all these systems in your exhaust this exhaust has been tuned to this cylinder so basically what happens is you can see this pressure wave so you open your exhaust and the pressure wave goes out then the pressure wave comes back it's not the reversal of exhaust gases not with a four stroke really anyway and then that pressure wave hits the back of your exhaust, it comes back out again, hits the back of your exhaust, comes back. But when it hits the back of your exhaust, this is high pressure. When it starts to set off again, there's this low pressure region behind it, and that's when we open our exhaust valve. So here there's a low pressure region, there's a pressure wave on its way back like this, and it's low pressure. So as soon as we open our exhaust valve, it's low pressure, it entices the air, uh, the exhaust gases to fuck off out of the exhaust and follow this pressure wave out of your exhaust. If you then delete this, if you then change your exhaust system so it's more of a free-flowing exhaust system, this all goes out of whack. That's what happens. It goes out of whack because it's all length and time based, based on these restrictions inside your exhaust. Now that you've changed it by basically having a straight through pipe, what happens is, is that your pressure wave is just all wrong and so many things can happen. What can happen is, is that your pressure wave actually meets the exhaust valve when it opens, which is choking your engine out, which means your volumetric efficiency isn't as high. Generally what happens is because of the length of these exhaust systems, you haven't really changed it, you've just taken out some of the restrictions out of it. So instead of slowing the wave down, you've speeded it up and it's an even lower pressure region. It depends on the exhaust system. This is why I have to say it like this. You know, what about this exhaust system? Well, it depends on each system, the exhaust length, the exhaust gas temperatures and blah, 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 blah. But generally what happens is, is when this, um, the, 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 the lower pressure region here, or the pressure wave isn't as high, which means that there isn't as high a pressure in your exhaust. So this is what we call back pressure. It's not a, a given number because this is a dynamic wave, but the, the pressure in your exhaust system has been lowered, which basically entices more of the air fuel mixture before the exhaust gas closes to basically enter the exhaust system as well. What does this do? It means it leans out your um, fuel and air in your cylinder, which again means you're gonna lose a bit of power. And it also means that some of these, some of this fuel and air mix into your exhaust, touches the hot exhaust pipe, there's oxygen in there, it ignites, and you get a pop. This is what happens with, if you are on the throttle, you are on the throttle quite hard, and then all of a sudden you get off the throttle, especially with a, a, a system that isn't tuned properly, because uh, you've just gone and basically swapped your exhaust system for an aftermarket one. This is why it pops because you're wide open throttle, the ejectors are giving it full blow, you are in the power band, you then shut that throttle off, but there's a lag there, the engine is still going fast. When you shut your throttle, your engine doesn't instantly half its RPM. And because of this um, overlap, you've basically given it loads of juice, but then you're asking the engine basically to throttle down, so you cut your throttle, so you're cutting the air, but the injectors are lagging behind because they've maybe have already have sprayed exhaust, uh, sprayed their fuel because they spray it on the intake, on the back of the intake during your exhaust stroke generally, 
and then what happens is, is that exhaust gas goes into your cylinder and then it pisses out because you've basically slowed that right down which means you've fucked all your harmonics for your exhaust and all the rest of it and some more of that fuel mix into your exhaust pipe i'm trying to think of a way to demonstrate this um with some slinkies some ping pong balls and so on i'll show it better with these exhaust pulses because we'll talk about the calculations with the speed of sound and so on and so on and so on but basically in a nutshell your engine is this and your exhaust system when you have an oem system has a uh, as a bullet point it has x amount of back pressure or basically resistance it's resistance it's flow resistance in the system it has x amount and your valve overlap overlap is x amount and this system has been tuned together if you then go and put an aftermarket exhaust on there you are changing this this system here you are changing this without changing anything else so your exhaust system starts to basically misbehave you might drop a bit of power you start popping like a dickhead stuff like that this is why you usually have to go for a remap or you reject depending what system you have carb or injection now the metering of the fuel with a carb is you rejet it um, obviously a lot of people put air filters on and exhaust and stuff like that so they're changing the whole dynamic the whole balance of the engine it's all been sorted decatting is another one there's not this fucking big honeycomb cat in the way so everything just flows through changes the dynamics it changes the timing um and then the question is well wait if i get a delcovic exhaust pipe one of these cheaper ones and stuff like that it says i don't need a remap generally the reason why is they are changing the exhaust note but the pressure this system this x amount of back pressure or resistance in the exhaust is pretty much the same if they maintain within a certain level so just say uh the oems there there's a band around that which could be your aftermarket system and this is all good you don't really notice anything when you get to race systems and all the rest of it they might be changing it up down here well out of this band you know the the back pressure and all the rest of it in relation to your timing and stuff like that and then you need to basically remap the ignition system uh, the fueling system so it basically knows that everything's just gone out of whack and stuff like that the same thing kind of happens if you have if you change your cams if you change your cams more aggressive cams stuff like that you have to go and get a remap otherwise the ecu and the fueling system be it either a carb or fuel injection has been developed with this exhaust been fitted you change that exhaust system it's just thrown everything out of whack um so basically that's the difference like i say there's a band around here and some of these cheap ones like a delcovic system and that their resistance their exhaust pressure and stuff um within the system is close to the oem so it really doesn't make any difference that's why they can say to you it doesn't require a remap and stuff and all the rest of it but then don't expect to get 10 20 horsepower more or back or recovered or whatever out of it because it's not that much different than the oem system when you go and get a sexy sexy exhaust system you know that's all singing all dancing can give you up to 15 horsepower back and stuff like that then you are definitely going to do that because they really are changing the dynamics of the exhaust system you know it's generally basically that simple and this is why you can chuck on end cans and stuff and it really makes no difference to your exhaust system because the cat for modern bikes the cat is in the way the cat is the main restriction in all of this when you decat them then yes you have to go and get a remap something like that hope that makes sense and i'll see you in a bit